This Bible study is called according to my gospel. Stated in today's scripture is something of which the majority of Christendom is either unaware or willfully ignorant. Let's take a look. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble, as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. 2 Timothy 2 verses 7 to 9 KJV. Let's take a closer look at this. Three times in his writings, Paul refers to what he preaches, the revelation of Jesus Christ according to the mystery, Romans 16 verse 25, as, my gospel. And in this instance, Paul prefaces this with the statement, Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. And the true student of the word will take note and not dismiss or ignore this as many do, but instead simply ask why Paul would say such and seek to understand the things that differ between Christ's teachings through Paul and that of the Peter and the other kingdom apostles who preceded him, the Twelve. Please note that the teachings are Christ's and are only directed through his chosen revelator of grace, the Apostle Paul. If one looks at Paul's Gospel, the but now Gospel made known by Christ, as revelation of the mystery to Paul, it makes no distinction between Jew and Gentile as all are counted as sinners, Romans 11 verse 32, without respect of persons and without regard to the Israel's law and prophets. This was not true of Peter's gospel, the gospel of the kingdom slash circumcision, in which the Gentile was to come to God through Israel being a kingdom of priests, operating under their new covenant, Jeremiah 31. But now, God's offer by the revelation of Jesus Christ according to the mystery, Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 7, the resurrection of Christ from the dead is, according, to Paul's gospel, spoken in concert with, consider what I say. These are very blunt statements on the part of the Apostle to the Gentiles which beg that we ask why. And statements such as this require the student of the word to account for just what is meant, as it is very specific to Paul and not what the kingdom apostles were preaching. And at the time Paul penned these words, he was in such position as to suffer trouble, as an evildoer, even unto bonds, e.g., he was in prison for his preaching of this message. But even though he personally is bound with his physical movement restricted, he quickly notes that the word of God is not bound. And so, with this as a given, Paul is willing to continue writing the word of God and to endure all things for the elect's sakes. Why does Paul feel this way? Well, he continues with the answer that the elect may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And just who are the elect? Simply put, the elect is anyone who, upon hearing the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures, responds in belief that this was for them, and by grace through faith is saved. While there is no doubt that God, in his timelessness, already knows everyone who has or ever will accept his offer of salvation in simple belief by grace through faith, there is also no doubt that God will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. Believer, consider what Paul says and share what he refers to as, my gospel. Thank you for listening to this Bible study today.